What is up, everybody? It's Trey from Tree Talks here, and what you're about to watch is the Jacksonville Jaguars versus Baltimore Ravens preseason week number one recap, player grades, position grades, and players of the week. Now, before we hop into this video, why don't you go ahead and drop a like down below if you're all ready for preseason week number two, because week number one was terrible. Also, if you haven't yet, Hit that subscribe button, click the bell icon so you get notified every single time one of these videos go live. I post new Jaguar content on this channel six days a week. Ain't nobody at work me. Them to straight facts. But ladies and gentlemen, let's hop right into this video. This is the Jaguars versus Baltimore Ravens. Preseason, week number one, position grades, and players of the week. Alright, the first thing we're going to be talking about is the offense. And before we dive into that, let us talk about the fact that the Jaguars didn't play 32 players last night. 14 of them were due to injury and the rest were just veterans that the coaching staff felt it wasn't necessary for them to play. Why risk injury? I think the Marquise Lee injury last year in the preseason had a lot to do with this. When we lost Marquise Lee in I believe week number two of the preseason and it was a whole season ending injury, I think Doug Marone kind of woke up and was like, I don't want that happen to I don't want that to happen again. So we need to make sure that none of our guys get hurt. We're going to bench them. We're going to play all these guys that are fighting for a roster spot and see how bad these guys really want it. And to be 100% honest with you, in a 29-0 defeat, not a lot of players stood out. There were some players, and we will talk about them when we get into the players of the week on the offense and the defensive side of the ball. But as for the most part, most of these guys did not impress. You know, most of them kind of came out and played like the players they were. It was like watching an AAF game you know what I mean it was just a bunch of guys that are practice squad level guys that didn't go out there and elevate their status like I said there were a couple of people but not a lot of those guys did anything to elevate themselves now there are going to be three more games in the preseason so they have three more opportunities to get it right and to be able to prove themselves that they need a spot on this roster but as of right now like I said no one's really separating themselves in a race in a position battle right now even some guys that we think are going to be locks on the roster, kind of struggled in this game. We're going to be talking about those guys as well. But we're going to kick things off on the offensive, on the offensive end, talking about the quarterbacks. And, you know, I keep on delaying this video bit by bit, but let's start off by saying let's not take the preseason too seriously. And I'm not going to be taking the preseason too seriously. I'm not pissed off that we lost. I think that it was kind of embarrassing that we didn't put up a single point, so I'm going to be kind of ripping on the offense a little bit. So if things get a little out of hand, just know I'm talking to these guys as of, you know, they need to make a roster spot and they need to stand out, so they need to perform in the preseason. And unfortunately, a lot of these guys didn't do that, so I'm going to be ripping on a couple of guys, including some people I'm actually pretty high on and, you know, why I'm irritated that they didn't go out there and show that they deserve a spot on this team. So... I'm not taking the preseason too seriously. I'm not pissed off that we lost. I'm pissed off that some of these players didn't do enough to separate themselves from the pack. So now we're going to kick things off. Now talking about the quarterback position. Now Gardner Minshew got the start. Nick Foles didn't play a single snap last night. And I will be lying to you if I didn't say I was thinking about this all goddamn day. I was thinking, I was like... Yes, I get to go home, watch Gardner Minshew play, and it's going to be awesome. He's going to be playing for my favorite NFL team. I already just watched him every Saturday play for my favorite college team, and now I get an opportunity to watch him at the NFL level. And he did not do great. You know, the all the quarterbacks that came in last night, uh, Alex Magoo, Tanner Lee, both of them will touch on him after we get done with Gardner Minshew. But uh, <clears throat> the, most, the average yard per throw was three yards. So these guys did not take a chance down the field. There were a couple of drops by the wide receivers, but for the most part, these quarterbacks were gun-shy, and Gardner Minshew was definitely, definitely gun-shy. Now, he got lit up after bobbling a snap, and I know for a fact you've seen that video everywhere on Twitter and Instagram because I can't go anywhere without being tagged in that video because it's all over the internet. I swear to God, everybody's posting it. He got lit up, and that was basically the most notable Gardner Minshew play of the game. You know, he went 17 for 14 for 47 yards. That's only a 3.3 yard per pass, and that is 
not good. You know, and this offensive line didn't do him any favors. And I think the scheme that the Jaguars were running definitely did not do him any favors. He did not look comfortable under center whatsoever. He's a guy that comes from a spread offense. You know, he needs to be in the shotgun. And it seemed, you know, when like Alex Magoo came in there, they put him in the shotgun quite a bit to, I think, kind of fit what he was trying to do. And I just don't understand why they weren't trying to do that with like Gardner Minshew. Gardner Minshew was under center taking these drops. He looked uncomfortable. His arm strength is definitely not where it needs to be. And I'm going to get a lot of hate for that because a lot of people think that he has decent arm strength. And I just, I don't understand it. You know, the, the only big completion he really had was like a 15 yard slant. And that's just a timing route. Uh, if anything Gardner is good at, it's timing and, you know, release. He has a quick release and he has good timing. Like that's what he's good at. And the route that they ran was a timing route. He knew exactly how to hit it. That's playing the Gardner Minshew's strength. And I just don't think the play calling last night or the coaches really played to any of Gardner's strengths. I think these next three weeks he really needs to come in and run some things that we know he can run and run some things that we know he's comfortable with running in order to be successful next week. Because if he keeps going under center, he's going to keep on getting lit up, he's going to keep on struggling, and he's going to keep on looking really awkward. He doesn't have very good pocket presence. He lacks the size. He's obviously getting hit quite a bit, and his arm strength looks whack. And you know that people... You know, on Twitter, on Facebook, they are getting real, real irritated. They're like, oh my god, Gardner Minshew's not going to pan out. He's a sixth round draft pick, and we knew that he had all of these problems before we even drafted him. He's definitely a developmental project, and the Jags would like to groom him along to see if he maybe can be that guy. But as of right now, he is definitely playing like a rookie. He's definitely playing like a sixth round drafted rookie, and he didn't do a lot to separate himself but luckily for him, the other two quarterbacks did not do, uh, did not do, did not do any better than Gardner Minshew did. Gardner Minshew didn't turn the ball over. He was close, but he didn't turn the ball over. But when Tanner Lee came in during the second half, holy shit, was that hilarious! He literally got sacked, sacked, and then threw a pick six. That's Tanner Lee for you. I'm surprised he made it to the plane ride back home because he is absolute garbage. He's worse than Nathan, Nathan Peterman. Could you imagine having to play freaking Tanner Lee in a regular season game? That would be absolute garbage. And there's not no tape to break down of him except for if you want to judge how he hands the ball off because he went 0 for 3 and won an interception for a touchdown. So I guess technically he threw a touchdown. He was the only Jaguar quarterback to throw a touchdown in that game. And he played like absolute terrible terrible hot garbage he gets an f plus i just realized i didn't give gardner Minshew a grade i'm gonna give gardner a d minus i think that he needs to work on the things that he can work on and i don't think it's all his fault uh per se with gardner Minshew. i think that again the play calling was kind of off he didn't look comfortable with the plays that he was running so i think you know once we get him a little bit more comfortable and a little more suited in i think the jaguars will be just fine with gardner Minshew. but he definitely deserves that D plus on the day for the week one of the preseason game and he only threw 40 yards you know and he, seven passes for 40 yards that does not do it for me 50 percent completion percentage is good but again for only 40 yards that doesn't do it much for me Tanner Lee of course was terrible he gets the F plus or the F minus I guess he'd get that because that's that would be the lowest you'd get an F minus he did awful like that's that's the lowest grade you could ever get <laughs> in this video like that is absolutely terrible trash what he did and Alex Magoo came in there I think he went like two for six for 16 yards there wasn't a whole lot of things to break down from him that <clears throat> you know we could really talk about he did throw an interception which was bad and you know we're gonna be giving him <clears throat> we're gonna be giving him a d plus as well I think you know uh nah I'd be giving him a I'd give him an f you know, because I think Gardner did better than both of these quarterbacks and Alex Magoo again with that turnover, you know, and Tanner Lee and Alex Magoo are two guys that just need to fucking figure it out because, you know, <clears throat> one of one of these three guys have to step up and be the backup quarterback. And as of right now, I'm not very confident with either one of them. So Nick Foles better stay freaking durable. And talking about those quarterbacks getting eight and alive and beat up out there, that offensive line gets an F. There is no starting offensive lineman out there, and this worries me. Because we saw this last preseason. When our number one offensive line wasn't out there, they struggled and they struggled mightily. And we we're like, oh God, they better not get hurt. And then what happened? They got hurt. And we 
did not play good football because we could not win in the trenches. We could not block anybody. We were allowing free blitzers right out of our quarterback. Not a single one of these offensive linemen stood out. Not a single one of these offensive linemen did anything good. Not a single one of them. This whole offensive line also gets an F. The offensive line and the quarterbacks were definitely the two worst part worst parts of this preseason game on the offensive side of the ball for the Jaguars and we're used to that as Jags fans by now that was basically the whole story last year was that our offensive line and our quarterbacks did not perform up to par and that's another thing they again did not do they did not perform up to par so an F I think is more than fair for the offensive line now let's talk about the wide receivers. I thought the wide receivers did all right. There were some guys that did not perform well, and there's some guys that did. Uh, DJ Chark had a reception, and he should have had a deep ball reception, but Gardner missed him on that one. And, you know, the, the Jacks quarterbacks couldn't get the ball to these guys at all because, you know, either they lacked the arm strength or they just did not have time to throw the ball anywhere. But one guy that really stood out to me was Trey McBride. I thought Trey McBride had a good game. He had two or three big catches, and he was the only guy on the offensive end really at the wide receiver position that stood out at, in a positive way. There was a wide receiver to me that stood out in a negative way, and that was Keelan Cole. Now, we would probably be talking about Keelan Cole a little bit differently if that kick return touchdown counted, but man, oh man, he did not look good out there. Like, we've given him a chance last year, and he blew it, and this year he's blowing it, and there's guys that are outperforming him in training camp right now that are probably going to get a roster spot over him, like guys like Terrell Pryor, even, you know, Trey McBride. He had a better game than freaking Keelan Cole did, and, you know, he could make an argument on why he should make the roster over Keelan Cole. I don't think Keelan had a good game, and he really needs to step up if he's going to make this 53-man roster, because as of right now, I know I may sound crazy, but it doesn't look like he's going to make it. I wouldn't expect him to, because right now you got to think, we have Marquise Lee, Locke, D.D. Locke, Chris Conley, Locke, and let's see, just like the outside chances, like Terrell Pryor, he's in there, and then Keelan Cole is probably the fifth guy in there, sixth guy in there, you know, I'm probably missing somebody just off top of my dome, but... You know, it depends on how many wide receivers the Jaguars take. And if, you know, guys like Trey McBride continue to impress, then he's going to be kicked off the roster. And a guy like McBride is going to be taking his spot. So the wide receivers kind of get elevated to a C grade. I thought they did all right for what they were handed. And, you know, I'm going to, instead of giving them like a C plus, I think Keelan Cole's performance kind of dried them down just a little bit to prevent them from getting that C plus. Now there was one group that I was pretty impressed about, pretty impressed with, and I think that they will do good things throughout the um, preseason is the running back group. Raquel Armstead really does run like Leonard Fournette. He's a downhill runner. He's not. He doesn't have the best vision in the world. There were a couple of times he got hit in the backfield, but some of it was due to kind of predictable play calling at the time. And, you know, I think he finished the day with, like, 30 rushing yards, like, seven, six carries for 30 rushing yards, which isn't bad. He didn't have, like, one breakaway run, but he was somebody on the offensive end that stood out and looked like, hey, maybe this guy can play when the time comes. You know, Raquel is definitely going to be on the roster, and uh, unfortunately, he suffered a concussion towards the end of the game, so hopefully he gets better. But another running back I was really impressed with was, Alf was Alfred Blue. Alfred Blue looks like a guy that's going to be able to come in you know, on third downs and be like a reliable pass catching back or a reliable back that could get you those three, four yards you need for a first down. Like he, he looks dialed in. He looks like he's going to be a solid piece of this puzzle and a great addition to this Jaguar team. A guy that I personally would not have thought of to be a really solid pickup, but from the way that he played last night, it definitely shows that he has that potential to be a really really solid pickup for the Jaguars. I'm very impressed with these running backs, and they're going to be getting a C plus, the highest grade out of any offensive group of the day, and I think they definitely, definitely deserve it. Now, overall for this offense, I'm going to be giving them a final grade of a D plus. I think that the quarterbacks and the offensive line definitely dragged them down, but I think the skill position guys didn't have a terrible game. You know, some wide receivers stood out, some didn't. Keelan Cole, of course, and Raquel Armstead and Alfred Blue, I think, kind of raised this grade up a little bit and Hayes too Hayes had a good couple of runs in there too when he had an opportunity when Raquel left the game so they're going to kind of raise the offensive grade up just a little bit but don't get me wrong this offensive performance overall was terrible and you know we better hope that none of our quarterbacks get hurt I mean well at least Nick Foles and you know none of nobody else up front gets hurt we better hope for just not a lot of injuries because if that's our depth on display 
then they did not play well last night on the offensive side of the ball. Now we're going to be talking about the defensive side of the ball, and they looked all right. There weren't like they weren't as bad as the as the offense was. You know, I didn't sit out there when that defense was out there and think, "Man, these guys are bad." You know, they're terrible. I didn't really have a time where I thought that. There were some guys out there that were, you know, trying to earn themselves a position and, you know, unfortunately didn't stand out. That's what I'm talking about with the defensive side of things. You know, with the offense, you had some guys out there that didn't stand out in a way, but they struggled. On the defensive side of the ball, they didn't really struggle, but they also didn't really stand out. We're going to start things off by talking about the linebackers, and this was a very interesting group heading into this game, knowing that, you know, obviously Tevin Smith ain't playing, Miles Jack, Quincy Williams got hurt, you know, who are these linebackers going to be? Leon Jacobs kind of came in there first couple of series, and he played well. He did a good job. And then after that, no no other linebackers really emerge as guys that are going to be making this roster or at least making a difference. It looks like all those guys that aren't going to play um, will make the roster, and there probably won't be a lot of room for those guys to kind of itch their way onto the roster. So it's very unfortunate for those guys because it was just kind of meh. You know, like there was not a guy out there that was like getting seven tackles, you know, wrapping guys up, making plays. There wasn't a guy like that for the linebackers for the Jaguars, but they definitely did decent, and I'm going to be giving them a C overall. I think they did average and, you know, as of for a preseason game, you know, I'm not going to complain too much. But nobody as a linebacker stood out to me that is going to be making a push towards this final roster and get a final roster spot. I'm sorry, but just to me, there's not a guy really in that linebacking room that did that for me. Now we're going to be talking about the defensive line. The defensive line was a little bit interesting. You had a couple of guys stand out. You know, Josh Allen, it was very exciting. His first play on the defensive side of the ball, he had a tackle for a loss. And then after that, you know, he didn't really do anything else. But I didn't rewatch the tape, so I'm going to have to rewatch the tape and really kind of break down his game to see how well he truly did in that preseason game. But from that big impact play right off the beginning, tackle for a loss, like he did his thing and he did a good job. There's another guy that's been really controversial on the internet. Some people think he did all right, some people think he did bad, and that was Taven Bryan. Taven Bryan didn't register a sack or a tackle last night. And that's basically been the story of his career so far. You know, every time he gets in there, he's just kind of part of the defense. You know, he's not clogging up running lanes. He's not making tackles. He's not getting a sack. He just, he looks like he doesn't care out there, basically. And that was kind of the more of the same story for him this week and against the Baltimore Ravens. I didn't see the fire in him. I didn't see the passion. I didn't believe that he was doing, you know, great work. So I'm going to say Taven Bryan, man, he did not do fantastic. He did not do it for me. And, you know, I'm one of those guys that think he definitely struggled a little bit, you know, especially with guys like Eli Anku, who Eli Anku had a good game. He had six tackles, which was very impressive. You know, you would never notice that. But he definitely did his thing out there. And he was a guy that was on the roster bubble for sure. So that doing that really helped him stand out. So I guess, you know, what I'm saying as a people not being able to stand out is different for Eli Anku. Because Eli Anku was definitely one of those guys where they were like, oh, you know, there's so much talent on this defensive line that he's going to be pushed out the door. You know, he's been here for a while, but this might be a wrap. But, you know, now that he puts up those stats, it looks like maybe he's going to survive another day. You know, another guy like that is Dewane Smoot. Dewane Smoot had a good game. He had, I think, two tackles for a loss. So he definitely stepped in and did his thing and showed why he deserved a shot to make the final roster. So a lot of these defensive linemen did their thing and did their job and did it well. So I'm going to be giving them a C plus. You know, Taven Bryan, I think I'd like to see the effort level increase. That's for sure. I'd like to see what he can do, you know, with 100% effort, which I'm sure he's given out there, but it just doesn't look like it. And Taven Bryan's really the only knock on this defensive line that I have. Other than that, you know, a lot of guys went out there, did their thing, clogged up running lanes, did what they had to do. I was pretty impressed with the defensive line uh, as far as depth goes. Now we're going to be talking about the defensive backs. The defensive backs were definitely the shiners of this game, you know, uh... C.J. Revis. C.J. Revis. I almost forgot his name, but he was the player of the game. Spoiler alert. He's already... He was the defensive player of the game. He had six tackles, and he did his thing. 
And then we also got an interception by Hayes. I can't think of his first name right off top, but he also had a good game too. They were trying to test him all game long, but he did a pretty good job at holding his own out there. And, you know, it was it was awesome to see how hyped Jalen Ramsey got when he got that interception, you know, just the team morale. And he also shouted out Revis on Twitter. And, you know, he, he definitely is a guy that could be itching his way on the roster and could see some increased playing time next year, especially if he keeps playing that way. It's hard to be on this Jaguar secondary and not benefit from the people around you. And I think you're really seeing that in guys like CJ Revis. You know, he's he's a guy that has, you know, put up a good amount of stats. He was in literally every play. Another guy, Quentin Meeks, too, I thought had a pretty solid outing as well as a corner. And I think this whole defense, this whole defensive back group, man, might just be a little bit deeper than we thought. You know, we always think it's like top heavy. You know what I mean? You got Jalen, you got AJ, you got DJ, and then, you know, after that, it's kind of a wash. You know, same thing with the safeties. You know, it looked like no one was really contesting with Jared Wilson or Ronnie Harrison, but then you got guys like Revis, you know, coming out, and, you know, the secondary looks like it's always a competition. It looks like a bunch of guys that are always out there wanting to get better, wanting to be better football players, and that's what you want out of your football team. And I'm very, very excited to see where this defensive back group goes as a whole. I'm going to be giving them a B grade, and they definitely, definitely helped this defensive overall grade of a C plus. Like I said, you know, the linebackers, no one really stood out. The defensive line, um, it could have been better, but it definitely was all right. And the defensive backs definitely put together a showcase uh, out there, so definitely a C plus is fair for the defense. And without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's hop into the players of the week. The defensive player of the week is going to be C.J. Revis. I always, I already spoiled it. I told you he was the player of the week because basically what he did, no one else really matched it. You know, he had good, good tackle numbers. He was all over the field. The only thing he was lacking was a turnover. He didn't get that. But congratulations to C.J. Revis. He's the first. Defensive Player of the Week of the 2019 season. Now, the Offensive Player of the Week was a little bit more difficult to decipher, and I had it between two guys, and I think I'm going to give it to Raquel Armstead. I think Raquel Armstead put together a steady tape to show what he's going to be offering us in the 2019 season, and I think he's going to be a reliable backup kind of guy. And, you know, Alfred Blue is another guy I wanted to give it to, but we didn't really see him get that many carries, but... You know, I think definitely during the season, we're going to have a pretty decent running back rotation throwing in Raquel Armstead, Alfred Blue, Leonard Fournette. And I think these two guys are guys that can contribute. I was also thinking about giving it to Trey McBride. I uh, had two big catches. He also had a drop, though, so decided not to give it to him. But I think consistency overall is what did it for me. And I think Raquel Armstead deserves to be the first offensive player of the week for the Jaguars in 2019. And that was my Jaguars versus Ravens position grades and players of the week what you guys think leave your comments down below don't forget check the links down below as well you can like me on facebook at troop talks follow me on twitter at troop talks or follow me on instagram at trey von pixley also if you haven't yet make sure you hit that subscribe button click the bell icon so you get notified every single time i drop a new video i drop new content on this channel six days a week ain't nobody out working me them's just straight facts thank you guys so much for watching this video and as always you guys have a great rest of your day